I don't think it's unfair to say that all spiritual psychic phenomena can be explained by the brain. You might disagree. You might say, oh, but there's evidence. Oh, but it was so real. But I think if you actually look into it, and if perhaps if you, well, there's a good book out there called Hallucinations by Oliver Sacks. And I've just been reading this book and it just blows out of the water the idea of spiritual experiences, like visions, hallucinations of that kind. Whether they're hallucinations where you see a completely different landscape or it's things that are in your, well, view, which appears to be perfectly real, but are in fact a manifestation of the brain. You see with your eyes, yes, but you see with your mind fundamentally. And how the mind works allows you to see things aren't there or not to see things that are there. And there are various different syndromes which are involve various different conditions that allow you to see things that aren't there. An overstimulation of the mind because of macular degeneration. Your vision's going, but your mind is still stimulated and it can create temporary or even long-term effects known as Charles Bonnet syndrome. Charles Bonnet syndrome is where people have macular degeneration and they have an overstimulated part of the brain to do with uh, visual uh, phenomena, how you observe things for your visual senses. Without the input, but with the overstimulation, you end up with hallucinations that can appear to be awfully real, even though in actuality they're completely false. But you can imagine if you look into it, if you look at all the different conditions to do with hallucinations out there, how a person can believe that they're having a genuine experience. A person might well stimulate their brain in a completely different way, and because it does not relate to macular degeneration, they will presume it's not the same sort of phenomena. But in actual fact, it's still stimulation of certain parts of the brain to do with vision. Parts of the brain stimulated to do with vision will create visual phenomena. Parts of the brain stimulated that relate to auditory phenomena will create auditory phenomena. The same can be said for any other part of the brain relating to any other sense. A certain release of chemicals in some cases can cause you to actually have very vivid experiences indeed. A mass release of DMT in certain states of mind, when you're on certain types of drugs for example, or even if you're not, it can still cause an experience to appear to be very real. It can cause hallucinations. If it's not in fact a simple malfunction within the brain, it can be a chemical malfunction or abnormality which can cause a rush of chemicals that stimulate part of the brain, such as the visual centres of the brain, and cause a highly real experience. With many centres being activated to some degree, you may have certain things that seem to be quite real. A common malfunction in the brain is when people have a stroke and they smell burning, or they smell rubber or chemical smell. This kind of hallucination is caused by damage to the brain, disruption in the brain's processes, which can cause hallucinations of that kind or visual hallucinations, such as seeing light lights at the corner of their eye, or seeing dots, or whatever the case may be. When the brain is starved of oxygen, or the brain's function is disrupted, or chemically disrupted, you can end up with hallucinations that appear to be remarkably real. When you look at the sheer proportion of cases, recognised cases, and minor cases that can be discarded, where people might say, oh, it was nothing they might dismiss it in their mind. When you think about it, is it any wonder that people have so-called, well, spiritual experiences, seemingly realistic spiritual experiences that are really, well, nothing of the kind?